Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas and with me here is Team 12599, Overcharge, all the way from Oregon. They have just been absolutely fantastic this entire year, you know, and at the MTI, just wow. They were the winning alliance first pick from Wolfpack Bakana. just really fantastic matches going undefeated all the way through eliminations. What a team. There's so much to learn, I can't wait to jump right into this behind the bottom. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. All right, guys, let's start with just the overall robot architecture. You know, we saw a lot of people saying like, yeah, turret cranes are gonna be crazy, but it wasn't like really a lot of teams that tried it. Now you guys stuck with it the entire season. So what was the idea behind the turret crane? Were there any challenges that like really tried deterring you, but you know, eventually you persevered. So talk about it. Yeah, so actually uh, before the season that started, we did a lot of prototyping and we prototyped a turret and slides actually. And coincidentally this season, we used up all the designs we, uh, um, prototype over the season. So we decided to go with the turret crane design. Um, turret crane design is really simple, it's just a turret with vertical and horizontal sides. And we decided this was the most optimal design because um, it's very simple, obviously. We take up a cone and then with preset 90 degree rotations, we can easily score anywhere and it makes driving much easier. Yeah, and so you know, let's talk about your drivetrain. You guys are just so fluid around the field. Anything you think is really special or why don't you just walk us through it? Our drivetrain? Yeah. Yeah, if we want to turn a robot over. It's actually pretty simple. It's just a mechanism drivetrain. Um, we have our three odometry wheels that we implemented and um, we did add weights because um, during our first league meet, we tipped over, very funny. And we decided, yeah, we need counterweight, so we add a lot of weight on the bottom, and we have never tipped since. Awesome, yeah. And so now let's jump right into your turret. You know, there's just so many different ways teams run those turret mechanisms. So, so walk us through how you do it. If there's any changes you made throughout the season that just really leveled it up, and what advice you have for teams looking yeah. to do turrets. Can I answer this? Ethan. Yeah, okay. So it's really simple. It's a custom design and 3D printed um, turret pulley wheel, and um, we, um, um, geared it to a, um, a motor over here and the ratio I'm not quite sure I think there's like 110 teeth on the big pulley and the small one has about 24 teeth and then we just power it with a motor over here and we haven't really encountered any troubles really actually surprisingly this design has stuck with us from like our first match all the way to here we've never really made any major changes other than like adding our beautiful plates and stickers so. yeah and so with the turret what are you using for the bearing you know is it like a lazy susan a t bearing stack x contact what's going yeah, on there at first we tried lazy susan but it was way too weak so we switched to a metal bearing awesome yeah. yeah and as far as the programming goes behind the turret you know how are you making sure it starts in the same place every time in a super consistent yeah, so we use PID for that. Shout out to our programmer, Fiona. And we actually have, like, in case we do get our turret messed up during the game, we have turret reset um, functions and buttons, and we can reset pretty fast, so that's not an issue at all. Yeah, and so as far as automations go in Teleop, walk us through some of the ones you have, and, you know, let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah, so in Teleop, um, it's actually, uh, we implemented a system for the arm driver, so that um, controls like the slides, the turrets. Uh, specifically, we want implemented um, preset heights, so like uh, heights for like the ground junction, low junction, medium, and high. And then also, as Helen mentioned before, the preset 90 degree rotations, that way we can, you know, just drive straight in a line, and then, oh, there's a junction on the side, press up two buttons, then we can drop, easily, right? So it's, it's pretty simple. So um, that's one of the things we did. Um, we also added some other things for like, uh, if we want to close the claw or open the claw, if, like maybe we drop the cone, and then also for the auto liner. Yeah, and so you know, let's jump into that claw. There's been so many different designs. You guys have a pretty big claw, and obviously it works really well. So walk us through it. Let's talk about the sensors, how you're actuating, and how it's changed throughout the season. Yeah. So I guess the first thing we should highlight, I mean, obviously you can see there's uh, rubber noodles. Uh, we implemented this because, you know, it's a better grip. It can, like, kind of compress a little bit. Uh, we found this out, uh, I think, during uh, our league matches. And um, also you can see there's a color sensor. We use that uh, during autonomous to detect where the cone stack is. You know, um, Also, if there's a cone in the claw, we use that during teleop too uh, to detect like um, if we run into a claw or a cone, it'll automatically grab. We have that too. Yeah, and I see this junction aligner down here. So was this something you had the entire season? When did you add it and how does it work? 
Yeah, so uh, during our league matches, actually, um, we didn't we didn't have this for like first couple league matches, and uh, problem we realized was that when you were trying to align for like auto or teleop, the turret would be a little bit wobbly, and so we decided instead of like trying to get the turret extremely precise, because obviously it's, it's going to wobble a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. We decided maybe we, uh, we align the junction to where we're going to drop the cone. Maybe that's a much simpler solution, more effective. So we came up with, the, with, this, with this auto liner. Obviously, there's many iterations that go into it, but this worked out the best. Yeah, and I see you guys have this extra degree of freedom to rotate the aligner. Is that just because uh, you know the way your turret swings around, it can be on either side of the junction, or is there a different reason behind that? Yeah, it's, it's primarily that. I mean, obviously, first, we just had one that was static, one side, but then we're like, why can't we use this in Teleop? Let's just make it turn. Yeah, no, that's that's really clever. And so now going on to your horizontal extension on top of your lift, walk us through how it's actuated, if it's changed at all throughout the season, and what advice you have for teams looking to implement similar mechanisms. Yeah, so our first design for our horizontal slides was actually uh, wait, yeah, a cascade string slide. It took um, about three servos to power, and it was very, like, chunky and clunky, whatever adjective you want to use to describe it. And then um, before Worlds, actually, we switched to a uh, no-string um, slide. It's just yeah, it's just three um, slides stacked on top of each other. And we powered it through a linkage and only one servo this time. And it's really smooth. It actually goes further than um, our previous slides. And yeah, we only use it during auto, though. For teleop, we're completely fine without it. I see. And I see you guys actually have your servo mounted on the part of the slides that's moving. So was this like, uh, you know, there's a very specific reason you did this, or that's just how the design ended up working out? Uh, so actually, we believe that it would be simpler if we put it on the slide that was moving. That way, there would just be uh, less like torque. Because if we put it on the mounting side, it would just be a lot harder, and we might need more servos, which is what we intended not to do. Only have one servo. Yeah, for sure. And so now, talking about your lift before we uh, go into game strategy, walk us through it. You know, if it's had any major iterations throughout the season, and how you make sure it's really fast. Yeah. So we initially already planned to do uh, some sort of slide lift, right? But uh, as you can see, there's three motors. Uh, that was a change that we made before our Worlds competition. We thought, hey, if we add another motor, we'll have more power, more speed, right? So um, we use the 1620 RPM Go Builder motors. That's also another change. Um, from the two motor to three motor, we increase the RPMs. Uh, it just gives us so much more speed. That way we can score cones faster. Yeah. All right, so now jumping into your game strategy, you know, obviously MTI, you guys did a lot right, ending up on that winning alliance, just really fantastic matches. So walk us through it, you know, when coming into a match, how you decide what you're going to do, and throughout the match, if there's any, like, on-the-fly decisions you have to make, how you make those. Yeah, so actually this is a whole new drive team except for the base driver. And before MTI for two months, we grinded really hard in my garage. Um, shout out to our mentor, Advit. He really grilled us really hard. We've tried like using pool noodles to mimic other teams, using trash cans, using our old robot. And we mainly, um, we ran a lot of drills and strategy based on the current teams that were competing. So we practiced circuit, we practiced um, Occupy and ownership. And we've also practiced many scenarios where like, we drop all the cones. What if like, they have a really fast robot? What if our partner DCs? We practice all the scenarios possible. And then during the match, we just pretended that our opponent was um, our mentor, and we were in our garage, and we just really popped off, I guess. Yeah, no, you guys just did absolutely fantastic in those matches, just really top-tier driving. And you know, so much to learn from this robot. You guys, yeah. I think, have given a really fantastic uh, you know, in-depth uh, review of how you achieved everything. So thank you so much for this interview. Yeah. Reporting for First Updates, now, I'm Abbas, and with me here is Team 12599 Overcharged. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.